Hey folks, Buck here, sitting in for Chris Wee and I'm here at uh, Gasket Alley Royal Enfield for the media preview ride of the Himalayan Scram 411 Let's go! So, here is the bike We just came back from a about 30km ride loop around KL from PJ with a slight off-road in the middle Let's go over the basics first before talk about the ride. Here's the look of the bike. It is quite a long name, eh? Himalayan Scram 411. I mean, they could have just called the Royal Enfield Scram 411, but they want to keep that because I think they want to emphasize that this Scrambler is derived from the Royal Enfield Himalayan 411 which is a hardcore off-road or if you look at their website they say it can go even where there's no road but if you have watched their uh, videos about the Himalayan ride I'm not talking about the Himalayan ride as in they name the ride according to the bike but the ride itself is called Himalayan because they go riding there and seriously the roads are epic right so that bike is designed for that kind of adventure so, as we all know, uh, off-road bikes, they're a bit more compromised for that kind of ride. So, the suspension is not really the best for on-road. And um, so, that's why I think Royal Enfield came up with this model, which is uh, apparently towards more road-oriented riders, uh, which is actually a bigger market than a hardcore off-road adventure bike. So, some of the changes that they made to make it a bit more road-oriented includes uh, a smaller front wheel. Uh, the Himalayan is using 21. This is using a 19-inch with a wider rubber. The suspension has been firmed up, also slightly lowered. So, the Himalayan will have a 220mm ground clearance. This one is about 200, so slightly lower. but Here's the funny bit. The seat height is only 5mm lower than the Himalayan. Apparently, uh, this seat is fluffier for the city folks like you and me. <laughs> so apart from that, the Himalayan also has this uh, metal rack here that holds up the headlight. Also, those, those metal racks are used to uh, put your additional fluids like fuel or any camping gear or any gear that you want to step on a bike so now the headlights is fixed on the handlebar so it moves to the handlebar and from what I can see the headlights still halogen I wish they had moved to uh, LED and also compared to this Himalayan this one only has this one uh, gauge which is kilometers an hour uh, a fuel and also a few other things like trip meter here but missing is the RPM meter and also there's also a guide uh, gadget where it's special for the Royal Enfields uh, it's not here because uh, chip shortage when it is available you can just buy that thing and install it in the rest of the bike is actually still very Himalayan uh, the transmission is still a 5 speed same as Himalayan the engine the fins look at that beautiful beautiful no no it's it's not fake it is air cool so the engine is a 411 4 stroke air and oil cool thumper oil coolers over here this one comes with the aftermarket oil cooler cover originally it looks like this so yeah this also comes with a few other stuff like, like the side rail the back right so this engine makes about 24-ish horses 24.3 24.4 if not mistaken so yeah it doesn't make that much but top output that's where this thing shines right so yes you have 
250s in the market that makes more power than this <laughs> more power than 24 horses but you also have to remember this because it's air cooled they cannot compress and get more bang out of the fuel but because of that compromise it is also an under stress engine so <laughs> basically this engine can just go and go and go and go and go and also uh, whoever has experienced air cooled engines before they will know it tends to burn the legs but we stopped at the traffic light we waited two minutes the sun was hotter on me than this engine coming the heat coming off this engine i didn't feel it at all barely lah while riding that thumper engine sounds very scrambler it suits the bike next let's move on to uh ergonomics very natural very friendly i mean usually when i ride a bike it'll take me about an hour or two to get really used to something but this one it feels at home straight away amazing and coupled with that very friendly engine output i mean i mentioned about torque right you can feel the torque just pushing the bike like a train so riding in town the size of the bike very friendly although it's about 185 kilo without fuel it's about 15 liter tank so you're talking about 185 plus 15 200 kilos with fuel uh, it didn't feel like it was bulky at all to go through traffic uh, we did manage to go on a bit of highway I know we're not supposed to push it because the, the highway maximum speed is quite low it's about 60 but we did take it up to slightly 100 on fifth gear it feels comfortable that's a slight uh, vibration you can feel but that vibration not it's not the, the bad one it's not gonna annoy you it feels it's one of those good feeling uh, good feel vibrations you, you, you can go for an hour or two of just riding and just enjoy that right so <clears throat> oh yeah we did go on a bit of an off-road off-road section like I said while the Himalayan is more off-road oriented but because this is based on the Himalayan it is still capable it was so easy to ride on those loose sand uh, it, it didn't feel like it, I was going to wiggle out of control and, and that white top output through the revs also helped in making that, that negotiate that those sands easier uh, I didn't have to think about oh, what gear to use I, it just feels right in almost all gear right so all in all um, this for now is a nice bike around town a uh, highways um, that has yet to be answered when we get to test ride it on the highway on a slightly longer ride seat wise too for that uh, how many minutes 40 minutes of riding it was good i didn't feel any fatigue at all very plush uh yeah i uh, would suggest on paper it may look like a eh, 24 horses i mean speed freaks will be speed freaks they will want something fast but uh you can be quick in traffic with this with that amount of torque uh and how nimble the bike is also it's 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 this this bike is not something that you can judge it by looking at the catalog the brochure you have to come here ride it then you feel like hey suspension supple i mean we were going over those you know those thick rumble strip that you have a lot around town that will shake your feelings out right on this we were just sailing over those rumble strips we're talking about and then we went on the bike lanes on ferry highway you anybody who's used used those uh bike lanes on the ferry highway will know that it is not the smoothest there's a lot of bumps but we were going quite quick or quite fast on that road so uh with all that positives what about the negatives uh 
not many it's more of things that's missing from the bike number one like the tachometer the rpm meter i would love to have an rpm meter here right and then secondly the headlight uh, yes uh most of us won't be riding at night that often but uh, an led system would be nice they can make it round they can make it classy but use an LED bulb instead of the hello traditional halogen bulb right and then double stand this is missing the Timberland comes with it I think uh, if you're the type that goes off-road often camping picnics on those uh, with places with lots of sand yeah? you, you know what I mean double stand would be nice and the tires these tires are the tube type so uh, yes modern tube tires are more reliable than the older ones but still if you have a puncture off-road uh, and you don't have a double stand uh, quite tricky to get it done a double stand would be nicer but apart from that I don't know 26,000 ringgit 900 starting price and goes all the way to 27 something and you can also load it up with uh, a few things like uh, like I said the aftermarket muffler it's a slip-on the piping is still original and then like uh, on this model you have the rear rack and uh, the side engine bar so if you tumble it doesn't hit the side of the engine uh, it also has this the brake re rear brake reservoir cover uh, also uh, like I mentioned it has that uh, engine oil cooler cover uh, so that's about it oh yeah I forgot <laughs> of course this uh, I, th I think this, this should come standard <laughs> uh, right so yeah that's about it for me for now uh, I hope you had all the information that you are looking for at this bike looking at this I'd say come here and try it out and we can tell you more about the riding on the highways you know Malaysia is full of highways we didn't get to try any of the faster ones but once we get a longer test ride maybe we'll take it off uh, on the highways on a longer outstation ride maybe so we can answer your question whether it will be nice cruising for an hour or something at 110 kilometers to go Rawang or Thailand. But if you're talking about riding in town or even trunk roads, try this out. This is surprisingly really good. Right? Buck sign out. Ciao.